All right, so in this episode, we're going to be talking about predictive analytics with MicroStrategy, and I'm going to show you how to create predictive metrics, so stay tuned. All right, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create predictive metrics. Um, the first thing I want to do is I kind of want to talk about the kind of me predictive metric we're going to be creating. We're going to be creating a predictive metric called using exponential regression. Um, there's also, you can also use linear regression. Um, but before we get started here, let me just talk a little bit about what that means and what that's doing. So if you take a look at the screen here, I have a really rough graph. Uh, and it's just sales by time, right? So very simple, very straightforward here. But now with linear regression, when you create a linear regression metric, what it's trying to do is it's going to try to fit a straight line to this graph. So if you can, I'll just kind of use paint here to demonstrate that, right? So let's say we're trying to fit a straight line here to this graph. Um, you can see because of, if your sales or if, or if the metric you're trying to, to fit, this to predict is very volatile, like as you can see here, sales are kind of in line 2013, then they steadily increase 2014, then they take a big jump 2015, but then they take a big dip 2016, and then another big jump in 2017. So this is very volatile. So it, it's very difficult to accurately fit a straight line um, to this graph here, as you can see, right? It's almost like you'd have to put something in the middle, but then it doesn't really predict anything that well, right? So if I fit a straight line to the best as I can here, it looks about like that. But it's not really predicting anything all that good. 2013, 2014, it's so it looks like it's on the money. In 2015, it's a little off. Then 2016, 17, it's just, it, 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 this is just not going to be that valuable, right? So I'm going to be using, but you can use that. There are some situations where it is useful. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use exponential regression. Now, extra exponential regression means that y you can add a curvature to the line, right? So let me let me just show you here. So I'll fit this here and then let's add some curvature right and then we'll pull it up here still not great but you, you get the idea right it, you, the, the, the line has more ability to better fit um, more volatile changes in the data um, it can adapt better right so anyway so that's just a quick overview of kind of what it's what it's really doing just so you have a have an idea in your mind of of okay so i created this metric what's it really doing what's it trying to do how how is it predicting uh these values like is it accurate is it what should i use should i use linear regression should i use exponential regression um so yeah so just a quick overview on that hopefully that's clear and that makes sense um and then we'll get started we'll jump into microstrategy and uh create that metrics all right so for this demonstration, I think I'm going to kind of show you the end result first, and then uh, show you how we how we arrived at this at this report. All right, so I have a simple report here. I just filtered, have a little view filter for cat by category. We're just going to look at books, and we're just going to look at two months, January and February. Okay. So if you look here, that you have units sold. Okay, those are the actual units sold. All right, for January. And February 2014, 2015, and 2016. Okay, this is these are the actual units sold, and then the column on the right is our predicted units sold. Okay, so this is the predicted metric that we created, and as you can see, it's not too bad. It's pretty close, right? We sold 2660, predicted 2950. We sold 4000, it predicted 38. We sold 50, we sold 53, predicted 51. So you get the idea. So it's it's in the ballpark, right? And this one, it was really close. We sold 3260, it predicted 3272. So that, that's very close. So not bad, pretty good, right? Um, but I want to show you, so let's go ahead and let me remove this unit sold metric. We'll re-execute the report. Now, we didn't have data for 2017 here. But you see it, now you will see it here, right? The reason why, I just want it because it's predicting, right? It, it, that's the, the whole value in this is we don't know the data yet, right? So there, there was no data in that before I removed units sold. You saw there was only 2014, 2015, 2016. And now at, that I removed that, you can see 2017 here, okay? And then the predicted, and then the predicted value. So it's predicting that we're going to sell 
7,437 uh, books in 2017. Um, I just kind of did that just to kind of show you that it, that it is actually a predictive value. Um, so now let's go ahead and, and I'll show you how I created this. Let's go ahead and create our training metric. So I'll come into a new folder here. We'll click right click, select new. Well, actually, we'll go from the top. We'll go to new training metric. Go ahead and click next. Now remember I said we wanted to use exponential regression. Um, again, I explained linear regression, right? Fitting a straight line, you can also use that. For this example, I'm going to use exponential regression. Okay. Now, our dependent metric, that is the metric we're trying to predict. So in our example, it was units sold. So we'll go ahead and select metrics, sales, and we'll come down and choose units sold. So we'll drag it over to dependent metrics, since that is what we want to predict. Now, if you remember my... Um, the, the report, on that report we had month, right? So we want to predict that by month. So that would be our independent metrics, right? That's what, what data are we going to use to make the prediction, okay? So we're going to predict, we're going to use month, right? So we'll drag month over here, and we'll also drag month of year over here. Now, Segmentation. I want to talk about this a little bit because I think it's important. Um, so especially when, when you're predicting um, units sold, right, by, by product, right, different products sell differently, right? You may sell one pair of shoes a week, but you may sell 10 t-shirts a week, right, or a month, whatever, right? So those item products sell differently. So you're going to want it to predict those separately. Okay, so if you sell one t-shirt a month and 10, uh, one pair of shoes a month and 10 t-shirts a month, you don't want the algorithm or the predictive metrics to say, okay, let's split the difference, so I'll just predict five, five for each of them. No, that, that, no that's not going to work, right? So you want to segment it. So we'll segment it for this example on category, okay? This will give us a more accurate prediction. Okay, so we'll drag category down there. And we'll click next. All right. Now, our base name, this is just the base name of, of the metric that it's going to use, okay, to, to name the metric that it creates, okay. Our folder, we'll leave that where it is. Actually, yeah, we'll leave that where it is. That's fine. Um, automatically create report. Actually, So I think what I'll do is I'll create maybe a separate video and go into some of this more advanced stuff. Um, again, include extended statistical analysis probability so probability that that will also create if you so if looking at the bottom right predictive metrics to generate okay our predicted value okay that's the metric we want that's the metric we're going to use in our report that's the metric that's going to predict our units sold now the next step the next one down is probability okay that is basically a, it will create another metric that will give us the confidence right so how confident is the algorithm in this prediction Okay, and like I said, maybe I'll make a separate video getting into this stuff, but right now this is really just an introductory video into predictive analytics with MicroStrategy. So we'll just leave all the default options and we'll click next. Okay, but I also actually, it's also important to point out the aggregation function you want here. Now for units, we just want sum, right? We just want to sum the units. So, but you could tweak these values depending on your, your scenario, right? There are many different things you can do with this. So I'm just kind of covering one just to give you an idea of how to use these things and how to create them and, and, and the meaning behind them. Let's go ahead and click next, click finish. And then we'll change the name a little bit. Training metrics for units sold. We'll just leave it at that. Keep it simple. Hit save. Okay, great. So now we have our training metric. Okay, but the next step, we want to create a report with this training metric, right? To actually train the data, give it data so it can make these predictions. So it can create the metric to make these predictions, actually. Okay, so this was just kind of step one. 
uh, the next step would be to throw this into a report and feed it data. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll create a new report. And let's go ahead and add our attributes. So from time, we're going to select month. Select month of year. And we're going to select from products, we'll select category. And then we want our units sold. And finally, we'll add our new training metric. If I, can, if I can get it on there. There we go. All right. Here we go. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and run this and let's train our new metric. Okay. Now, you'll see here this pop-up box here. This is telling you that the predictive metrics from this report were created successfully in the following paths. Now, what this did is this created a new metric. Okay. Remember, all we did was create, uh, so far, was create our training metric add it to a report, and then ran that report. The result of that report, yes, you see the results from the report, right, in the grid, but the result of that report, the effect of that was it created a new metric, right, and that's what this prompt is telling you here. Okay, now this new metric can be used in various reports, in other reports, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll save and close this. We'll call this our training report. And now, if you look at our folder here, there's our training report, here's our training metric, and up, oh, we have a new metric here. Unit sold predictor, this is our predicted value. This, this is our actual prediction or predictive metric. Okay. So next, let's go ahead and use this in a report uh, and recreate that report I showed you uh, earlier. So we'll go ahead, we'll click We'll click new report, new report, okay, and we'll add month, then we'll add month of year, then we'll add category, and we'll add units sold. So we can see how good our predicted, our new predictive metric is. And then we'll go ahead and this time we will add our new predicted metric. Not the training metric. This is the resulting metric. The metric that was created from as a result of our training. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay. Now, these are our actuals on the left. Our actual units sold and our predicted values. So, not too bad. Not too bad. See, look how close with electronics. 1435 is the actual. 1440 is the predicted. So it's not bad. It, it's, it's, it's pretty close. This is, this is definitely reasonable. Um, and maybe you could do, think of some more ways to tune it from here. But we are definitely in the ballpark. This is definitely reasonable. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. And one last thing I want to show you is that it is actually making predictions. So if you look here, we have our actual units sold in our versus our um, uh, predicted, predicted units sold, okay? And as you see, we only have data through 2016, okay? We don't, so we only have actuals through 2016. We haven't, we haven't hit 2017 yet. I mean, in reality we have, but given the data, we haven't. So let's go ahead and again, prove that this is actually a predictive metric. Let's remove units sold from this report. Re, it'll it'll re-execute. And let's scroll down, and we should see data for 2017, data that hasn't happened yet, proving that this metric is actually trying to predict. And yes, we do. January, February, March, April 2017. This was not here before. It is there now. This metric is, in fact, predicting these values. 
All right, guys, so that'll do it for um, this episode of Predictive Metrics. Hopefully all that made sense. Um, and it's important to note, there's a lot more you can do with this. Um, you know, you can also do like um, association, classification, you know, classification where you're, you're essentially trying to predict categorical values, right? So maybe binary, yes, no, um, or maybe from some group of categories, that's, that would be classification. Um, association, that would be like if you wanted to do uh, like affinity analysis, right? Items that, that are likely to be sold together, that have a high affinity, uh, you can do that with predictive metrics. Um, you can do time series analysis. So there's, there's really a lot more you can do with this. So I'll probably end up making some uh, follow-up videos at some point, maybe dive into a little more advanced things you can do. Uh, but this is definitely a good, good intro introduction to predictive analytics and predictive metrics, really, with uh, MicroStrategy. So let me know if you have any questions, comments, put them down below. Thanks for watching. All right, so that'll do it. This is a new channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and thanks for watching.